in today's podcast, you're going to meet the Hernandez family. This is literally their journey from very humble beginnings, which is owning a shoe repair store to building cash flow for life. And if you're that person that says, Andrew, you don't know how tough it is for me. After you listen to their story, you'll realize what is possible because there is no options if you're willing to put some work in, if you're willing to learn. So uh, listen up to the story. It is going to be absolutely awesome. This is Andrew from Cashflow for Life. Hi, my name is Osvaldo Hernandez, and I'm from Mexico, Michoacán. I'm Bandi Aguilar, and also I'm from Mexico. We invest in real estate. Um, we have some rentals, but we also do flips here and there. We are in one of our properties that we're gonna convert it into Airbnb. We decided to start working in real estate because we were seeking to have more time with the family to be our own bosses. I think real estate have changed our life. I say our life because we have six kids. Now we have the opportunity to go to work, maybe long hours. And I think that really have helped us with our kids manage our time and take them to different things that they want to do. Hi guys, welcome to the Cashflow for Life podcast. Today you are in for a treat because uh, the couple that we have here, it's Mr. and Mrs. Hernandez. So it's Oswaldo and uh, Brandy. This is going to be an interesting story, kind of what you can do from a humble beginning, right? Owning a shoe repair store to cash flow for life. So guys, welcome to the show. Thank you for Thank inviting. You. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for inviting us. So Brandy, we'll start with you, okay. right? Uh, just to kind of put a perspective, uh, you guys have kids. Yes. How many kids do you guys have? I have six. Six kids. Okay. Six kids. And uh, when did we meet? Um, we meet, I don't know, like... High school. No, we, like, you, Andrew... Mean. Yeah. When did you guys meet, kind of come to mastery, to the mastery. whole thing? Okay. Well, I think Osvaldo met you first. Right. Because I was not here when he came for the first time. I think I met you two years later of that. Right. But yeah. you sent him to the first event yes. that I was doing. Yes, I did. Okay. So explain what had happened, what had led you to sending him to a um, kind of cash flow for life conference. What had happened in the past with you guys? Well, um, we have some, um, thank God we you know, we work, we save some money. We had a business, we have purchased some properties, but we got into a point that it was done for us because after certain amount of properties, banks don't want to let you more money. Or if they do, they want you to have a lot of money in the front, at front. And then, then they ask you so many paperwork and all that. Then it's just more hard to continue investing because we didn't, we already kind of reach, we have, I think, at that point, like eight properties that we have purchased previous mastery. And we got to a point that you we were grow. stuck. We okay, were stuck. You're stuck. Yeah. Okay. So I want to roll it back before. Sure. Right. Uh, before you bought these properties, you guys had some interesting experience with real estate. Yes. Before. What had happened in 2008 and nine? Uh, we lost two properties because of the recession. And um, uh, my parents, um, we first purchased my pro uh, our home. And then um, we see that I always look into finding the way to, I see different people like renting and things like that. I was like, well, I have credit. It was really good at the time. I have a, I had a really good job and I got approved for a property that my dad, my family, mom and dad, um, they put some money and I put my credit and that's how we um, inquired one property. You bought a property for them? Um, yes, for okay. them first. But then they started like renting. It was a three unit. They rent two and they live in one. So okay. they were okay. Got like it. I had a good job too. Okay. Got it. And it came to a point where you guys were losing those properties, correct? Yes. My dad, um, they got their house and we purchased another one just for renting, like half and half. But then he lost his job and then we already had a business and we were growing with other stuff. So we didn't continue supporting the payment because remember we purchased these properties when they were really expensive. So then the recession came and they were doing short sales and the property that we purchased at 380 was 150. So I was like, 
Okay, so then I couldn't afford it. Uh, Osvaldo is like, you know, we cannot do this. We're not going to be able to make it with these two properties. We had to sell them. Okay, so you had gotten burned with real estate. Now knowing what you know, mm -hmm. right, with the cash flow situation that it was, would you buy that properties at that higher price? No. No. Yeah. Right. Because it was not the market. It was really what the price you had paid yes. in relation to the cash flow. Correct. Yes. Okay. So Oswaldo. Yes. You had a, a small business, right? Yeah. What was it? It was a bunch of plumbing business, electrical business. What kind of business? No, did you no. Have? It was a shoe repair business. Shoe repair yes. business. Okay. And where was the shoe repair business? Uh, I was at um, downtown Chicago, like okay. uh, Michigan and Lake. Okay. Corner. So, um, because whenever somebody thinks about a shoe repair business, right, it's not a very glorified business, very humble business. It right? is It is a humble business, yes. Right. So how did it, what was it that your dad was in that business before? How did you end up buying a shoe repair business? No, that, that's the funny part. Um, I used to work for an, an electric company uh -huh. and um, I broke my knee playing soccer, so I didn't have nothing to do. So my brother had an, another little business, shoe repair. So I used to go and, you know, visit him. And he told me, hey, there is a, a, a shop, they're selling it. And we're crazy, so we went and looked at it, and uh, we make an offer. We bought it. We bought it. What'd you buy it for? $40,000. $40,000. Yeah. We, we didn't have the money. No. You, so how did you guys buy it? She, she was working... At that time, at the dental assistant, she was a dental assistant. I was working at the company. We we were collecting, you know, every single check. We usually spend her check and collect my check. So basically, living on <clears throat> less money, yeah. saving yeah. money, the old school way of doing it, yes. definitely, right? which is the right way, but it's the old school way of doing it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, and I w we were short twenty thousand dollars. So I called an uncle over there in, in uh, uh, California, and I said, you know what? Um, uh, there is a business. He does business like flippings so i told him about the business and he's like well if it's for a business yes but i have to talk to your dad first because i wanted to make sure we were what 20 some like 24 25 and um at that time we bought some land in mexico like a small land and i said okay anything happens i'll give you the land so he, he said let me talk to your dad because i think you're crazy you're too 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 little my dad said, if if that land doesn't cover, I give you my house. So he borrowed $20,000. We did it like for a year, the loan. And we worked, I worked at the company seven in the morning. And I, then I went to the shop all the way to 12 at, in, night. at night Okay. for three months. And we pay back the twenty thousand dollars in three months. Okay, and I, and I say all of that because kind of as the as we progress further in the conversation, right? Today people will look at where you guys are, right? So uh, today on the podcast we're gonna have your daughter join in uh, in a little bit, and yet you look at today, it's very 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 humble beginnings, right? Yes, There's yes. a lot of times people say this, they're like, Andrew, you don't understand where I am. I drive Uber or I have this yes. or I have that. Um, you know, what gave you guys this uh, thinking or this tenacity to say, hey, I'm not defined by where I am. I can go anywhere I want to go. Where did you guys get that? Because a lot of times people are like, you know, man, I mean, what do I do? I just have a shoe repair shop downtown Chicago. Yeah. Right. Where did you guys think that you can own real estate? Uh, because this is crazy. Right. I, I have to tell this. Uh, I was thinking that part. And her family, back in Mexico, they had a little shop. My family, we had a little grocery store. So everything comes from that. You know, my father used to work for himself in a truck, you know. So I think we had that from from, from our parents that from they, yeah, that they work not for people. Work for themselves. For themselves. Okay. So, so you had pride of ownership, pride of whatever of you were doing. Uh, uh, when we had the store, we were watching at the pictures. We have a lot of pictures of the store. Downtown Chicago. A lot of people used to go and, oh, can I talk to the owner? And I said, well, they didn't believe it. They look at me like, and I said, well, I'm the owner. Then I showed the the, the license. The license. And they see my name. They They were like, you know, like. How did it happen? So we were, it was really nice to have that uh, experience. To say we didn't know anything about shoes. 
only that we can put it on their feet. That's it. But, so there was a business yeah. you learned from the guy you were buying it from. Yeah, um, uh, uh, some of my family, my my okay. brothers used to work, but I, I personally, I didn't know anything about it. They they show me some tricks. She was really good at you know like with leather jackets and all the stuff. She was really good at charging too. So right. we 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 did good uh good business. So you guys show up right. You started. You went back to real estate, right? Most people once they. Uh, kind of fail at something and they mm -hmm. didn't fail because the market, they failed because in this case, because it was just bought incorrectly. Right. Right. So um, they won't go back, but you went back to real estate. Yes. What was the reason? Well, I see the, the, how it happened. Like I was like, okay, I bought it for 380 and I'm selling it for 150. So I was like, it must be more houses like this that I can buy at this cheap price right now somehow and eventually by the it has to go up it cannot go lower than how it is mm -hmm. now right so we did we did learn a lot from, from that, that from, from, that, from the short sale for you know how we bought it why we did bought it where in that um um the 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 place where we get it so we learn more of that Big From fail? the failure yes, that we did. Okay. Yeah, and, and it was it was sad because, you know, oh, yeah. it was not only my money, it was, it was my parents' money that, like, even if I wanted it to continue, we were not be able, we were going to be maybe going more down than, so like, so it, like to make better. So um, not only it's your failure now, you're taking your parents with yes, you. Yes, right, yes. Right. Okay. So um, you guys show up. By that time, you had managed to buy seven, eight properties. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? And uh, you send Oswaldo to the three-day. Yes. You didn't show up. Why didn't you show up? Because I I just had a baby at that time. Okay. So that was baby number five, I think, at uh, that time. No, it was number four. It was oh, number four. Yeah, so since we have known you, you had two more after that. Yes. Oh, okay. So um, so you were full-on pregnant, so you send him. Yes. What was his impression when he came back from the three-day event? <laughs> well, he, what was his impression? Um, he called me. Uh, I was in church. I remember that day. I was in church. He's like, hey, it's a lot of money to go in there. That's all what we have. Like, I was like, no, you know, let's wait, let's come home. We talk about it. No, it's that I cannot, I cannot wait to talk about it. Like we had to make a decision now. I was like, okay. I, I, I told, I told him, I trust you. Whatever you think we can get something from it that we cannot do it now and we can continue growing. What are we doing? Is your, is your option. Like you, you do it. I cannot go. I don't know. And. So it's your opinion, like whatever you see there, if you see something that you think we can get out of it, well, let's, let's do it. So let me ask you this, because this is, I know you guys on a personal basis. I know your daughter now, um, right? So I see the family dynamic. Yes. You, from what I see from the outside, mm -hmm. you guys, both as parents, as um, heads of a family, you guys seem to have a lot of faith in each other, yes. right? Where does that come from? I think because we start from the beginning and we have grown together and um, I can see Osvaldo not spending money in things that he doesn't have to spend it. And I think he sees me like, nah, I'm not even have long nails, things like that. I really don't like all that stuff. Although sometimes like, oh, I should do it. But I think um, we had to trust each other as a family. And even though we have gone through so many things and so many problems, because no but it's perfect, right? But we have trust and I we have trust our daughter in decisions and we can try, we're trying to kind of taking her where she needs to be, where right now she's making her own decisions where before like, mom, what do you think about this? Now I had to ask her like, oh, this happened, this happened. But I think she has seen how we have worked and how we have grown and how we make decisions that can help her now, like not to probably make the same mistakes that we did, but we can, um, like she can do it by her own now, you know, and that's so, good to see. So pop, uh, so uh, basically Oswaldo shows up at that time, yes. right? And uh, when he shows up, he comes to mastery, yes. right? It's expensive, yes. right? And I will never forget this. He brought me a cash flow analysis <laughs> yes. of the properties yes. that you had done yes. and you sent it with him. Yes. And I'll never forget a line at that time. He says, he says, Andrew, I don't know how to speak English, but if you're telling me what you're telling me is the truth, that I can find the money, 
right? Mm -hmm. I can own a lot of properties. Yes. So was that your biggest problem? Yes. Uh, I think our biggest problem is money to continue buying without going through the process of the banks and all these headaches that usually they, I mean, once you have at least three properties, you're, Becomes you're tough. done. You're done. Yeah, right. yeah. You guys were not doing any private money on the front end. No. No. You guys were not doing commercial loans. We, no. didn't, we didn't know and nothing about it. No. Okay. We, I used my credit wow. for the first, I think, three properties. And then after that, when I came here, I came with a visa, right? So I have like a social security where I, I work and all that, but he didn't. So when we became um, DACA recipients, that's when right away I was like, okay, you have to start your credit. And then that's how we purchased the other, other properties. Mm -hmm. Right. And then it was done. But After it was just, that, we were just Just stuck. like one or yeah. two properties based on your income. That's it. And, There's nothing else you can and, do. Also, you know, the blessing of having the business that whatever extra cash that we have, we will collect it. And it was, um, I think, two properties that it was, they were pretty cheap that we grabbed the money from the shoe repair, the any any uh, extra money that we have. Mm -hmm. We didn't just keep it, you know, yeah. we like, you know, I always was like looking and things like that. It was like, hey, there is this property. Let's make an offer. We have the 40,000. And and literally you're buying properties with in Hispanic communities around Chicago yes. for dirt cheap and then fixing them up yourself. Yes, they were like bad. But, you know, that's the other, that's the other funny story that we didn't know how to fix the houses. Like no. the first houses that we purchased, it was houses that they were already livable, you know. But these houses, of course, 40,000, 50,000. Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah. um, Osvaldo hired some first and some then cousins. He, some cousins <laughs> of friends or things sure. like that and he see how they were doing it and you know i think that he's a fast learner and he does he's not afraid to put his hands on you know right. and i think um into this day we can see if you want to grow you had to you had to put your hands on you so know? let me ask you this as far as um today right it's been, so you guys started buying properties, right? Yes. You would basically buy properties with private money and then, uh, which you borrowed from Mastery, yes. right? And then you would refinance it with uh, the commercial loans, mm -hmm. yes. right? Did that whole thing make sense? Because I never met you for the first two years. Yes. The first time I met it you was, did. I think, at the three day. It did. I, I was surprised because after he joined Mastery, he joined Mastery in November 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. We, we had three properties same, under contract yeah. on February, March. February, March. Three. Three. And I was like, are you sure they're going to give you this money? We mm -hmm. don't want to get stuck and things like, yeah. And I was scared too because like, it's when you're doing flips or you're doing remodel in a house, it takes time. And, and if you have three houses at the same time, I was like, how are you going to do this? Oh no, you know, this one doesn't really not a lot of work. This one... I'm helping my mom buying it. So they're going to help me fix it. And I was like, okay, all right. And I, I was like, okay, you sure? Yes. So he went and put a lot of offers. And for our surprise, we got like three offers accepted. And I was like, okay, now what? We're going to choose one? He's like, no, they say they're going to find the money for me. And I was like, okay, all right, let's do it. <laughs> I didn't believe it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So you get the private money, you fix them, you refinance them, yes. and you keep them, yes. right? So let's fast forward that, right? Today, uh, how many flips do you think you guys have done? Uh, before Mastery, we did two within two, three years, like not right away because right. we it took us time. Yeah. Okay. And we recycled the money to purchase the two units. Right. But right now, um, after Mastery, I think we have done four. After Mastery, more. 83rd, what the four? Summit, Holman. Holman, no, like about four or five flips. Five, four or five yeah. flips, okay. Mm -hmm. And then cash flow wise today, how much cash flow comes in every single month? Uh, we get to the point the cash flow was around eighteen thousand dollars a month. A month, eighteen thousand yes. dollars a month. But we sold after expenses. After expenses, but okay. we sold you know here and there, and right now we have another house for sale. And one that she's converting it to a uh, Airbnb. To Airbnb. So that's okay. her, her next. Got um, it. And you guys did something very exciting, right? 
which is your dream. I'm like, are you guys um, trying to create a Mexico in the United Mexico, States yes. or what? Right. Uh, but uh, what was your guys' goal or dream? I always grew up in like, not in a city, you know, and I want my kids to experience that and maybe live more comfortable, maybe live more like I cannot probably, maybe at this point, I don't think I will go live to Mexico, but I would like to maybe have my kids to have that experience and to live more like to appreciate we were in the city. Now we live in Oakland now, maybe more, more kind of a rural, rural, the rural, know, rural yeah. area. Yeah. So we can have some chicken, some maybe some vegetables right. and things no, like no, that. No, so I mean, it's, it's, we it's already have chickens. Right? We already have, we already chickens. have chickens in <laughs> our, yeah. But <laughs> so you guys bought a farm, yes. right? Yes. With the money that you did from some of the refinances, from yes. some of the flips. Yes. And you guys bought that farm with like a partial kind of a owner finance type of situation, right? And how many acres is that? 47 acres. 47 acres. 47 acres, about 45, 50 minutes from Chicago, mm -hmm. right? And here's the exciting thing. You bought it two years ago, yes. right? And now this guy, owner finance it, and you're going to pay the thing off. Yes, we're in the next months, we're going to pay it off. It will completely pay it completely, off. Yeah. Completely, right? And which is exciting, right? Not only do you have cash flow, but now you're kind of living a quality. Now, a lot of people will say, oh my God, I want to buy... 50 houses. I want to buy a hundred houses. And before we start talking, you were saying something that what is the goal for you? Because you guys have six kids. One of your daughters is here. Who's going to be on here in a few minutes. Uh, but what is the goal for you? Is it uh, more money? Is What is it for you as a family, as a mother? As a mother, I always, I, I never intended to enter mastery or to come to mastery to become rich. To be honest, that's not my goal. But you do realize now you're rich. Uh, Compared I, to I most think, people, you're pretty. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> with we that have, kind of cash I flow. think you know we have the freedom. Thank God that we don't have to go to work to a five to. I mean, nine to nine to eight, eight, eight to seven. Because I mean, I had to when I was a dental assistant. I had to be there no matter what. If the extra patients, I had to be there. If the kids are sick, you you have to you show, up. To show up. This so happens, right now we up. have the opportunity. Thank God that we can stay home if we want to without any worries maybe for not to have any money to eat or to, you know, to have. Pay the bills. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think for me as a mom to have that, to be spending a little more time with our kids, I think is best. It's a very good thing. And um, to enjoy whatever little or a lot we have with our kids and to maybe – Maybe have have it easier for them in for the future, but not like not to go like crazy. Oh, I'm gonna buy a Mercedes van or things like because I don't think I'm gonna buy a Mercedes. <laughs> that, that's but like that's not you. Me. That's no, not no. no. You I don't, could easily afford it, but that's not you. Yeah, no. Okay, so um, at this point, we're gonna have uh, your daughter come on, okay. right, and kind of get it from her perspective. But today. Right. We have had Jocelyn on a bunch of times at the three day at, yes. uh, on stage, um, you know, kind of talking about she saw this. Right. Her first mm -hmm. loan. Um, yeah. I did the loan because I'm like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Right. Yeah. The mastery is kind of passing the torch from the parents yes. to the next generation. Right. It's, it's cool even for me to see that happen from your end as parents. How does that make you feel to see her now taking the thing and running with it? Yeah. Um. Well, I, I want to say this, you know, it hasn't been easy. It's been, you know, sometimes we work in the houses like all the way to night shift, you know. Now it's, it's you know, we're collecting that what we did. But I want to say something that uh, uh, Jocelyn did it with us. She experienced, you know, stay with my mom, um, stay extra in, <laughs> in, 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 you know, like with other people, like, you know, family and work with me, put in concrete, put in insulation. You know, most 15, 16, 17 year olds aren't doing that. No, and, she was actually and she was eight, proud of doing nine, it. Nine, ten. Yeah, she was, she was proud of doing it. And now I'm proud that, that she, she's here, that we can see what, what we've done. It, it's been doing something good but thank thanks to god you know he's always we believe in god and uh and i know he's putting us you know in a in a good position when she sent me to um to mastery 
to be honest, I I was like, who's gonna teach me something that I already know? It was my my ego, you know. But uh, when I when I saw you talking and 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 when I call her, she's like, no, but you have to wait. Like, no, you send me here now. We're gonna do it. You know, so now we, we're proud that she's here and, and it's, it's, been, it's worth it. I mean, it's incredible because even for me, it's an emotional thing to see that happen, right? As parents, to see your kids grow. Now, what they do with it, where they take it, that's up to them, right? You can't, mm -hmm. but you guys have laid a great foundation at least yeah. to give them the opportunity that you never had, right? right? And they have such an incredible start so it's got to feel like the proudest yeah, moment. Yeah, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of her. And, you know, even now that we see that she wanted to be a doctor since she was like seven years old. Like she was like, I'm going to be a doctor. Like she always put her standards really high. And then COVID happens. Like, I don't want to be a doctor. And she always like art and she always like these things. I was like, OK. But then she's like, I'm going to be an architect. And I was like, OK, good. And then I was like, okay, you want to do that? Then do real estate. Before you finish college, study, become a real estate. We already need real estate. We already always need looking for houses. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Yeah. And she's like, okay. And she did it. And now she's helping people with experience as she, we never knew this was going to help her, like putting concrete and mm -hmm. going to the roofs, like fixing a piece of roof that was not, that was leaking or things like that. And, we're proud of her that she actually is using those tools that she has since she was little and making a living of it, you know. Yeah. That's, Not that's only as exciting. a real estate agent, uh, she's going to be an architect, obviously, pretty soon, right? right? And uh, now she's doing her own flips, yeah. buying her own rentals, yes. right? So on that note, guys, uh, we're going to have Jocelyn come up. So Jocelyn, welcome to the show. Um, how old are you? Let's start. 23. There. 23. Correct. Okay. So, and when did you start working with your dad, helping him being a kind of part of the family business? Ever since I was born. Right. Ever since <laughs> you were born. Um, I don't, I don't know a world where I, I don't ask my dad, Hey, how was work? Or, Hey, what do you need to help with? Now I'm getting a little more busy where I don't have that a time, but we would always go to work together uh, when we had the shoe business carry the luggages um, full of shoes through the train yeah. or, you know, just the first job I remember is putting insulation in, yeah. in, in a roof. Um, he didn't fit, so I had to go in there. So yeah. On the attic. So On this attic. was, there was no such thing that, oh my God, she's our little daughter. We're not, um, you know, she can't work. We got to have, you know, the boys, when they grow up, they're going to do, the, they did not distinguish between that. No way. No. Um, maybe he had to wait until six kids to get his, to get his boy, but yeah, I was definitely the, f the first one, and there was no question about um, my abilities not being there because I was a girl. So was this basically, that's just what the family does, right? I mean, it's not like, oh, my God, um, I'm doing 50 other things like other kids in school. This was just what our family does. Is that kind of the family values? Um, I was definitely doing 50 things. I, I handled school as well, but it, it was, okay, now after school, what do I need to help my, yeah. my family with? I mean, it, it was never a question, but it was because it was a family thing. Okay. It was not, oh, mom and dad have to go to work. It was, okay, there's there's work to get done. What can we do? Okay. So um, you started uh, as far as helping him do flips, helping him do some of the work, kind of in your teens, basically, yeah. right? And then um, you show up Kind of was your exposure to us when your dad started coming to mastery? Correct. So exposure to mastery was when my dad um, went ahead and signed up. Um, actually, it was before because um, my parents said, "Hey, we have to get like our properties together to show them, present them in a nice way." They're like, "Can you do it?" So I made a little Google um, sheets mm -hmm. where I had the property <coughs> picture, a purchase price. Oh, so you did that? I did that. Oh, okay. I was always giving your mom the. Your idea, okay, Her got idea, it. idea, but okay. I, did, I did that, yeah. Got it, got it, okay, got it. So, you, yeah, because he had it put together. He's like, Andrew, this is what my wife told me to give it to you, yeah. right? I have no idea, right? Yeah. But, uh, I mean, he plays, a lot of times he plays as if he has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> uh, I realized that that day, but it was it's kind of cool to see. So, at that point, did you see a big shift in terms of how they were doing uh, their business before versus once they showed up at Mastery, started kind of tweaking the way they were going about it? Yeah, my dad was always doing a lot of the work himself, and sometimes we still do that. Mm -hmm. um, but 
once we joined Mastery, the scale just went from one a year to two, three a year, um, just because we had the the availability of and the accessibility to funds to that private money that banks weren't giving my parents anymore. We my parents had DACA at the time. Mm -hmm. um, all the doors were closed. There's so, okay. Even if he had this experience, no other bank wanted to lend him money. So got it. And um, at what age did you buy your first property? I think it was 19 going to 20. So 20. So 19 and 20, mm -hmm. right? Now, the question is this at that age, generally, right? Because you're kind of finishing high school, uh, you were going to get into college at the time, you're going through that whole process, and you had a full scholarship somewhere, right? I did. I got a full ride to the University of Richmond, where I, Virginia. Yes. Okay, got it. And so you went there for your architect uh, architecture, right? Well, first I was going to be a doctor, and then during COVID, I came home and we were doing a full gut rehab right by Midway. And during that gut rehab, my dad and I did the floor plans for the additional rooms we were going to be doing. And so I think I still have those drawings. Mm -hmm. I think it would be cool if I, we got to see them again. But just very preliminary line drawings with sure. measurements. So I think that's when I was really exposed to it. And I said, OK, this is what I thought, actually. I said, I see money here. Right. <laughs> if I do not come to help my dad full do real estate, this money is going to go to the other kids. Right. Like, and I cannot let that happen because <laughs> right. I worked too hard for this. Right. No, but um, it, it was a crazy time. I, I want, I think in the future, I would like to have a family and I want to be able to spend time with my family. And I don't know if a profession as a doctor would be able to do that. And we just had something building and I wanted to continue doing that. So, you know, uh, somebody once said, I've never forgotten. It's like, if you want to be rich, you become a doctor. Mm -hmm. If you want to be wealthy, get in real estate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, on the investing side, mm -hmm. and which is truly, truly true. And um, my contention is you can live a very rich life if you do real estate life and you can be extremely wealthy, <laughs> right? You, and especially with the foundation, you had said something that I'll never forget because it was just one of those uh, things that uh, at the right moment, you said something that, hey, you know, Andrew, my parents learned all of this at a little bit later age in life um, and you were exposed to it. it very early age, yes. right? I mean, for you literally legitimately to be a legitimate multimillionaire by the age of 30 is like even a joke, right? Because truly you have so much time to go, yeah. right? Because of the exposure. So today, you are you done with school? No, I am pursuing my master's in architecture and it's my first year of a three-year program. Okay, so you're doing uh, your master's in architecture. Correct. You got your real estate license. Correct. You're selling a lot of houses. Yes. Right. Thank God. Because now you know how to find investment properties, obviously. Yes. And uh, how many flips have you done? I think in total, it's going on to six with this one that we're, we have under contract now. Okay. So you're doing flips, mm -hmm. right? That generates uh, part of the income. Correct. You're selling real estate. Correct. And then you're buying rentals as well? Um, we have one rental. I think that's the first uh, property that my parents bought then was... We had to get a little creative. Um, that one was going to get lost via short sale. Um, then that property was transferred and then ended up coming to me, which is my rental right now. The other rental that I had is now the one that we're selling. You're selling your other rental. Correct. Okay, got it. And why are you selling that? Um, it's hard to find great tenants in the area. And okay. I think that one part of our business is, okay, we love real estate. We see the money in it. We're not in this for headaches. Right. A lot of people so buy, yeah. Yeah, so you're basically picking the right pockets, Correct. right? So the pockets that are not necessarily good for long-term rentals, you're like, okay, we've made a huge gain on it, right? And some of this money you guys are taking, right? And you guys are paying off that farm, yep. right? Literally you're taking, taking the gains and paying out the farm or uh, doing some of the refi because the properties have gone up so much, yes. right? So um, for a lot of people, right? I mean, today um, you guys started in mastery a group called, uh, you know, under 30, Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, basically a lot of young people. What would you say to, because I mean, genuinely, this is a podcast that you guys should do mm -hmm. in Spanish, yeah. right? With Pablo, because I think this will be, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, not just uh, people that come from Mexico, but in general, Hispanic speaking uh, people, that's the largest growth in the United States, just a fact of life, mm -hmm. right? That a lot of times they're like, you know, we came here because of immigration status. Everybody comes here to own a piece of America. Right. But they get stuck building all the houses right uh, at the restaurants, doing all the tough jobs. Us Americans are talking about it holistically. We don't want to do because that's the only thing they can get. Right. And they're like, because we don't have the status, we basically have to live on the fringes of society. 
And my contention has always been that, guys, listen, immigration and all that stuff, that's a political issue, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that has nothing to do with us. But I'm like, even if your butt is going to get transported back, right? Own 10 houses in America. Nobody can mm -hmm. stop you from mm -hmm. owning 10 houses. Because isn't that the true American dream for any immigrant, mm -hmm. right? Why do you think that's not the case specifically in the Hispanic community? The lack of knowledge, the, the, the determination, the hard work is there. And um, if it's one thing, me being in, in the realm of real estate because of how I saw my parents, one thing, even if it wasn't that, they taught me how to work hard. And so Hispanic people know how to work hard. Um, they just don't know where to get the information from, where I think mastery plays a big part in that. So, go ahead. And you were right about saying uh, the, the classes in Spanish. Um, I know a lot of people, Hispanic people, or uh, Spanish speakers, um, even the questions we ask you at the beginning, for some little things that we don't understand, then that's why they don't buy houses. That's why they don't do it. That's why they don't want to risk it. Because if we don't understand a word or something, you're yeah. us all the yeah. time. We have to ask Jocelyn, hey, so I know all this, but what are, what are they trying to say over here? Because, you know, there's a barrier yeah. in mm -hmm. communication. Exactly. There's a barrier, there cultural barrier, right? But I genuinely feel that a lot of times, you know, you see that happen in immigrant communities that a lot of times one person will figure it out somehow. And then they're like, oh my God, I don't want to tell anybody. Because what if they find out yeah. my secret? Yeah. Yeah. That's right? another thing, uh, yeah. I mean, this is a very common thing. I know it's, it happens in the Indian community. happens mm -hmm. in a lot of immigrants. It's not because they're bad people. Mm -hmm. It's because they're like, oh, my God, it's like back home. If everybody figures out my secret, mm -hmm. then my pie is going to get smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And we're very blessed that, uh, you know, in America that the pie can be as big as you want. Mm -hmm. Right? And Depends you learn on. more by sharing. And uh, this is... Such a great thing because uh, you guys are such an inspiration, right? Uh, a lot of times I've kind of picked on your dad because I'm like, he can't even speak English. So Imagine but look at what me he now, could do. I speak perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, genuinely, right? It gives other people hope because they're like, oh my God, I don't have to have all my ducks together. And none of us do. We pretend, some of us pretend mm -hmm. well. But I think that will be a huge inspiration, not only to young people, Right. That, uh, you know, listen, you want to make a lot of money, you want to do well, you can because the opportunity is there, but you're going to have to put the work ethic. Exactly. Right. And especially in the Hispanic community, I mean, there's so many people that Hispanic people, one thing you have to grant it to them, they're not afraid of hard work. Right. Uh, they're not afraid of hard work at all. It's yep. just that I think they don't, number one, know who to trust. Mm -hmm. And number two, they don't know exactly what to do and is it possible for them so mm -hmm. genuinely from bottom of my heart to your mom to you guys i mean this is not only what you guys have done for yourself but i think the leadership that that shows just recording this podcast it'll be awesome even for the audience so thank you again guys thank you, uh, thank thank you. Thank you. and guys for everybody listening this is andrew with cashflow for life and please make sure you share you uh, show support because that's how the show grows and again, to the entire Hernandez family from our end, congratulations. This is Andrew from Cash for Life.